Hi, this is Andy Maslin with just a little bonus for you. Um, I'm calling it How to Sell Your Copy. It was in response to uh, you know, a request from, from one of my students. The question is, okay, I've written all this stuff, but how do I sell it internally? Or how do I sell it to the client? How do I persuade them that what I've written is what they should send out and not take as a base for kind of tiddling around with? Um, and I've come up with seven ideas for just different ways, different techniques you could use to try and win that argument. And I offer no guarantees, you know, we're all in the boat together. Um, the first one is a conceptual idea. You have to be able to justify your choices. You have to be able to justify, in other words, provide a reason for every single word, every single punctuation mark, every single heading, every single graphic illustration, the way the whole thing fits together when you're asked. If they say, I had, used to have a client who said, I don't know if you meant to do this, but you started this sentence like this. And I say, look, I always have a reason. You just have to ask. And eventually this guy would say, Andy, I know there's a reason why you've done this, but could you just tell me what it is? And I say, yeah, sure, it's like this. So be ready with a comeback. Don't make it look like it was an accident or random. The second idea I had is to know your greats, know the copywriting greats, study their work and quote from them. You may have noticed in the course that I, I quote from David Ogilvy quite a lot, and Maxwell Sackheimer, Martin Conroy, people like that. If you are positioning yourself as an expert, you know, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants. So know who's come before you, know what work they did, be able to explain the kind of tests that Ogilvy and Mather ran, or whoever your favourite copywriter is, you know, whatever's happening in your industry, and just drop quotes into the conversation or say, well, if you look at the technique that you're asking about, this is something that they did back in you know, to the, the early 2000s, and here are the results. And you just gain a small measure of respect for what, you know, for what you're putting forward. The third thing, and, and I love this, I call it the secret thing although it's becoming progressively less secret as I tell more people about it, it's the only quantitative measure of copy quality that is actually embedded uh, already in Word for Windows, which is what many copywriters use. Maybe you do too. I, I mean, that's what we use at Sunfish. Um, it's called readability statistics. Now, readability was the brainchild of a guy called Rudolf Flesch, who was an Austrian-born uh, sociologist who kind of moved to the States and did a lot of work on this subject. You know, how easy is it to understand a text? And what are the factors that contribute to that ease of understanding? And he developed an algorithm, a kind of formula, that's based on the average words per sentence and the average syllables per word. And what it generates is a numerical score on a scale from 0 to 100. As a percentage. Well, in fact, it's not naught. You can actually get minus scores, which is rather worrying. Just to give you a quick benchmark, um, on the flesh reading you score, 60 is plain English. So that's where you really want to be aiming for. Uh, at the top end, at say 90, you have comics, and consumer ads are shortly, you know, just a tad behind at maybe 85%. A kind of detailed um, Legal journal like the Harvard Law Review is about 35. Things like Newsweek and Time and The Economist are around about 50. Down at 6 to 10, you've got the, uh, an, the average car insurance policy. And the US uh, IRS, so the tax code of the United States, is, is minus 6, I think. So that gives you a kind of an idea. What I'm going to do is show you the screen grab from the readability stats in Word and, and just talk you through it. But first of all, this is how you get it, because it, the factory setting in Word is that you don't see this. It comes at the end of the spell check. But what you have to do first, whichever version of Word you're using, is you go into the proofing options and the grammar and spelling checking. And you make sure that it, it's enabled check grammar with spelling. And you look down at the bottom of this dialog box, and there's a little square tick box that says, show readability statistics. And the way it comes from the factory is switched off. So all you do is you tick that little box, you close it, you run a spell check, and then you see a screen like this. So here we've got a whole bunch of numbers that essentially describe the, the quantitative measures of this piece of copy. The word and character counts aren't terribly interesting unless you're writing an ad word perhaps, or a subject line and you want to see how long it is. 
But the, the middle uh, section with these ratios, and this is very interesting because it has words per sentence. Now, do you remember in one of the earlier sessions, we, we talked about the ideal number of words per sentence. We're looking in B to C copy for around 12 and in B to B, so business to business for about 16. That's your guide. If you're scoring, you know, I don't know, 15, 16, maybe 17, it's not something to get too worried about. If you're writing to business people and you're getting 16.8 or 17, I wouldn't worry over much. But if you're getting 18, 19, 20, then yes, I would worry. Most likely, the problem will either be uh, you've got a very long sentence somewhere in the document, or you've got a preponderance of long words, you know, like preponderance instead of saying lots. So you go back through the text, you find those long sentences and long words, you, you tweak them, and you can watch that average words per sentence fall until it's within the acceptable range. But the three scores that really matter, that will help you win arguments, are at the bottom. You've got, first of all, the percentage of sentences in the passive voice. And we talked about the passive voice in the course earlier, and I think it was session six about the, the simple style that sells. You want to be aiming for none, so 0%. If you've written the entire piece of copy in the active voice, that's really, really good. The second one down is the flesh reading ease score that I was talking about a moment ago. So 60 is your target. If you're in a very technical area, or it's a very specialised piece of copywriting, you can afford to drop a little bit, maybe to 50, but there's always a risk. The lower the flesh reading ease score, the harder the copy is to understand. And right at the bottom, you've got the flesh Kincaid grade level. And this uh, refers to the, the American grade school system. So if, it, if you get a, a flesh Kincaid grade level score of eight, that means it's suitable for eighth graders. And to get uh, the chronological age, you just add on five. So that would be someone with a reading age of 13. Now that scale runs from naught to 12. So clearly, the lower, the better.